Hey guys, welcome back to Chris and Retro. Uh, tonight's video is going to be uh, about a pet peeve of mine, but also something I think that's more than just a pet peeve. There's a reason why it bothers me so much. Um, and I think it's there's some things out of it that we should consider. You know, when we're working in like a grocery store environment or something like that, you know, it's really important. Retail particularly, they do a lot of inventory. If you ever worked in those environments, it's a nightmare. Nobody looks forward to inventory. I remember when I um, one of the jobs I had uh, post release from my my last incarceration was at a, a restaurant, a chain restaurant, and um, the inventory was just absolutely a drudgery, and it was done I think every month, and uh, it would be a um, most of the evening event trying to make sure that we had inventory of everything that was going on, and and because that predicted how they could, you know, get supply back in and all that stuff. So inventory was really important, and the reason it was is because it controlled the cost, it measured the available supply. It knew that when we had predictable path that was being taken on for a restaurant and assumed volumes on how it was going to work under normal circumstances, that we would have what we needed to, to get through that business time and what that business required at that point in time. So we'd take our own inventory of that restaurant and make sure that we were prepared for our own storm. It's not all that different than when we look at personal budgets. So if we do a budget, you look at how much money you got coming in, how much you've got going out. You try to control those expenses. In the end, you want to make sure you've got enough money to cover your budget so you can keep things like the light on, food on the table, those types of things. Believe it or not, there used to be a time when that was the priority over cell phones and internet connections, but uh, we certainly have gone a long way. But uh, yeah, so I look at inventory control and I look at those types of things, and they really are about making sure that you're using the resources you have optimally and staying focused on that to make sure that that works out for you. Here's where my pet peeve comes in in life. So these are things that, you know, when you're running a business, you're running your personal finances, they're the way to make sure that you move forward and can do it well. I see gossip a lot. I see gossip in my professional life. Um, I see it certainly in the recovery community. I find it to be very toxic. Personally, it annoys the heck out of me for a lot of reasons. But I guess the primary reason why it bothers me is that if you're engaging in gossip, if you're the one engaging in the gossip, you're not accounting for what's going on in your own life. You're accounting for what's going on in somebody else's life. And I'll take it another step further in a second. You know, I was recently confronted with a situation in a work environment where I, I kind of have a zero tolerance policy when it comes to people working for me and talking about their pay or talking about anything related to somebody else's career um, opportunities outside of having a conversation with me about it. I don't really tolerate these these, these conversations back and forth. It, I just find it to be um, lacking focus. And if I've created an environment that's fair and, and reasonable and it gives everybody the same fair chance, there's really no need for it. They should be able to come to me with it. So I have a real problem with that. Partly the reason why I do is because I've seen in the recovery community, I've seen the same thing. I've seen this commiserating and, you know, one of the Chant, chant, yeah, try again, Chris. But one of the tendencies that we have in recovery is that rather than look at ourselves, it's hard to look at ourselves. It's hard to own the things that we've done wrong. So we look at other people and we talk about their situation because somehow that makes our situation not as grave. It's a human tendency for sure, and it takes discipline to get beyond it. I'm doing this video tonight because I think that more often than we're willing to admit, our lives get derailed. Maybe not so much about gossip, but in the inventory that we take. Now let's go back to the first example I gave. So if I'm in a restaurant and I'm taking inventory prepping for what I know to be a busy season, or I know an upcoming um, cycle, or I know there's going to be supply issues and we're going to be shifting the menu or whatever it is, whatever it is that you're working through. Maybe we've got an employee that's a little uh, sticky fingers and you're trying to get ahead of that. Who knows what it is, but you're planning for it and it's planning for it for your own restaurant and the health of the restaurant and the supply that restaurant has to meet the demands that it's going to face. Now think about that for a second. What if I went to a neighboring restaurant, maybe even in the same chain, if it's a chain, but I went to another location in the same chain and I took their inventory. I did a really good job at it actually, prepared them very well because I accounted for everything. I even told everybody about it. They're ready. I knew all about what was going on. You should have seen what was going on in their freezer. Oh my God, I can't believe how low they were. But you go through that inventory. Then you go back to your own restaurant to work, having not taken your own inventory. And here you hit a busy Friday night and you're out of everything 
and you're not getting a, sh a delivery for another week. Now you've got to limp along for a week, unprepared for what the week faces and probably even have to close down from times because you can't serve your customer base and you're not prepared for the work that was ahead of you because you were too busy taking the inventory of another restaurant. They're prepared or they've been accounted for, but you have not. You were not ready and you were ill-equipped to get through your season. Now the budgetary example. Let's just say that with your budget, you use all of your resources on one thing. Let's just say that you have a uh, shopping spree that you want to go on. You spend entire dollar, all, every dollar you've got on that shopping spree and you don't do anything to budget for everything else you need the month. And here come the bills and hit more bills and more bills. And now you're behind and you can't provide food or anything else for your family. You had the money. You just plan a, in a, disproportionately because your focus was off. You were obsessed over the clothes and you forgot about everything else. There's two things that come up in that focus and obsession. The inventory notion and this idea of gossiping and the reason that in multiple environments can be completely toxic is because it's about where your focus is on. If I choose to be a high performing person and I want to make sure I've got the energy and the resources and, and the path to make sure that I can get through what's asked of me, like a restaurant or as a person, I've got a journey ahead that I can reasonably expect what I've got to deal with. I know what I need to get moving forward because I've taken the time to look at my journey and understand what I would need and maybe know there's a season coming up that might be triggering and prepare for that season in my journey. If I'm not focused on that and I'm spending any energy focusing on what somebody else is doing or what their story is or, oh my God, you hear about that person or I can't believe that was done to me. That's a big one. This is even beyond gossip. This is the victim mentality where, oh my God, everything's done to me. You do it once and it's easy to do it multiple times over. Now all of a sudden you're not even taking account for your own ownership of your own path. Gossip certainly is a portion of that, but to me where gossip really plays in is it becomes the obsession. So now I've started with maybe one element of it that I start saying, maybe I talk a little bit about something, but I'm still sort of focused on my journey. Now all of a sudden I'm realizing I'm in a bumpy patch here that's going to take a lot of work and focus. Maybe I'm getting lazy about it and I'm now getting, it's easier for me to be obsessed over the situation and keep talking about that rather than deal with me and my story and my situation. And that fits no matter where you are. So let's circle back to the core of what we do here on the show now. And what we're really talking about is our recovery journeys. For those of you in recovery, the friends of mine that I have out here that are watching and those that are not friends that maybe you're just coming into this whole situation. How many times have you been sitting there and had your story rehashed by somebody else who's also going through a really rough time? And they always put some kind of a spin on it. <laughs> There's always some spice, some secret sauce put in to make the story a little bit more grave or sinister, or maybe even more sympathetic if they actually care for you in some way. Either way, those stories live on in different ways when they go on in somebody else's life. And they're usually ways for them to distract against what's going on. I know that all of you in recovery have had that happen from time to time. Think about what that means, though. And it means it from two different things. If you're the one, the perpetrator of that gossip, you're taking the inventory of another person. How can you possibly be mindful of what you need for you and your journey? How is it that if I'm blaming somebody else for my plight over here, I'm blaming them for my plight. How can I ever come back to this place and own what I need to own to get through? If I say it's somebody else's fault that I caught a charge and I'm not willing to face the behavior that got me to the situation that I end up in silver bracelets, I'm genuinely going to, I can count on repeating that again because I haven't owned what got me there in the first place. Now, I'm not saying there's not injustice, and I'm not saying there's not things that are done to us, and we can have situations come up. But if every single time I'm the victim in my story, or I'm the hero of my story, they're usually indicators that I'm not keeping track of the truth of my own inventory and what actually is going on. Gossip and these conversations are simply my ability to obsess over something outside of me and either knowingly or unknowingly take my focus off of my own journey and my own responsibilities. I don't know about you, but I find life to be challenging. I find life to be tremendously challenging in the person in recovery. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm tempted. I get tempted when my mental health really starts to struggle. I get tempted to really just say, you know, screw it, burn it to the ground. Let's go. Where's the matches? Where's the gas? Let's do this. You know, I get tempted like all of us do. What do I do with that temptation? Well, 
I have to re- look backwards and say, retrospectively, these are the things that I've learned from my lessons. And one of those things is this issue of inventory. The minute that I start feeling like a victim, I can promise you, I'm looking at what other people have more than me, what people have done more to me, all that other stuff, rather than saying, what am I dealing with? What's the truth of my life? What do I have to work with? What's working against me? And let me take what I can control, what I have to keep this restaurant open, so to speak, what I have to do to make sure I cover all my bills and use the resources that I have to their most efficient and productive extent so that I move forward as a human. And sometimes I have to do that in real small measurements. Sometimes I have to take that, that inventory daily to make my week. There were times in my life when I had to take it 15 minutes at a time to make it through the day. As time has gone on, the period between when I need to do that inventory is usually longer. But there are days when I get sideways and that thinking of mine puts me sideways and I start taking other people's inventory, talking about them, fussing over what somebody's done to me, rather than getting back to the center of it says that I own this road, man, and I'm going to, I'm going to go down this thing and live a life that I was made to be. This is not about some feel good exercise. It's about taking who you are and the circumstances that have landed in your lap or that you've caused and doing something with it. I got news for you. You know, I wish that I could be branded on this show as somebody that really did a lot with their life. It'd probably be, I think maybe easier. I don't know. I don't, I don't like the fact that I'm, you know, I, I, what I consider to be just a dumb criminal. I don't even have cool criminal charges. If there are cool (laughs) criminal charges, I was just a hot mess. I mean, that's, that's the truth of it. I don't even get to do like, you know, macho things. I was just drunk and uh, that's not the best feeling like that. That's not anything you want to be branded with. So I, that's another thing I have to look and say, okay, that's not who I am. You know, I'm, I'm not just that. I, I'm not a failure in the totality of my life. I had seasons where I really was just blowing it, but not for nothing. I learned a lot there. And one thing I did learn is what I'm called to do and why I'm here. You know, there's one of you out there that's going to listen to this tonight, and I hope that it touches your life relative to this issue of inventory. If you find yourself that you spend most of your days gossiping about, well, a good portion of your day, even gossiping, commiserating, justifying dealing with all the wrongs that have been done to you and why they're awful and everything else. And yet you're still finding an unproductive, unsatisfying situation. Reset, reload, take another look at what's going on with your inventory. Look at what is you. And I mean, don't broad brush it. When you find that your life has gotten sidetracked and you're spending more time looking at other people and messing around what's going on with them, go to the links of making sure that you itemize it in your head. And I mean, I've had that in some really broken seasons. I've described for you on this channel in 2018 when I was on my run and I stopped in the side of the road and I looked at God and said, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this. I don't know how I'm going to do this. And I literally on the side of the road, covered in sweat in the heat of a summer, prayed through every stinking thing that I could think of. And I'm talking everything from bills to my kid's future to the, my, my physical uh, ability to do better on that run. I mean, I went through everything because I just, Felt like I don't want to miss anything. And that lesson I've learned is also useful for me to take that inventory as I go through these seasons to make sure that I've got a really good assessment of the tools that are here for me to use, the things I've got to get out of there, the bad meat, so to speak, (laughs) the expired product. I want to get it out of my store. Um, I only want to keep in the fresh stuff that's going to be useful and motivating me and keeping me going forward. I really do appreciate you guys being here and part of this channel. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm just talking to my mic to, for my own therapy. <laughs> and I'm hoping it's something that you guys find useful because, boy, uh, sometimes I really do think I'm uh, you're my mirror, mirror on the wall, so to speak. But, um, you know, I really do enjoy doing this. I hope you find the information I'm sharing useful. You know, if you do, please like and subscribe. The subscriptions are important to me and the progress that I'm making on this show. I got some good news coming. Uh, my book finally has got some traction to actually get it completed. And what I mean by traction is I just had lost motivation for it. Um, it'd been around for a couple of years now. And um, I, I met somebody through my friend Ed Wallace that you saw on the show here. And uh, I met somebody that can help me get the final um, construction of the book done with some new concepts that I've been introducing to it. And I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. So probably within three to six months, I'll have a finished product for you. And then I'll be working with another friend of mine to make sure that we promote this thing correctly. But, um, you know, I'm excited about that this week for sure. And the opportunities that presents to the message that we have, this is more than just a YouTube channel and a podcast. It's more than, um, you know, speaking engagements and books and everything else. It's really about the message that I've learned. And one of the things I've learned is this issue of inventory. It gets me every stinking time. And I've seen it. I've seen it. There's no data out there to support this, but I would, I got a hunch 
that inventory goes a long way to people having reoccurrences of their substance use because they spend less time dealing with what they have to work with, what they actually are facing, and they just spending too much time looking at what's been done to them and what other people have or don't have. Hope this is helpful for you guys. I really do. You know, until we talk again, please stay productive. Um, keep focused on your own inventory and stay out of trouble.